friends welcome to another session of uh, web logic troubleshooting tuning and monitoring okay in this session what we are going to cover is okay so we are going to cover how to identify the leak data source connection in the data, data uh, uh, web logic okay and uh, along with that few more important parameters that we need to take care of when we uh, configure the data source okay so for this one i am going to follow this lab document of digitalk okay and if you need this document along with 33 more pdf lab document which contain the step by step execution screenshot and explanations then you can write to us on uh, digitalk.fmw@gmail.com okay though all those documents are available with the very bare minimum cost okay you can write to us and we will send you the details So let us begin with uh, the discussion on identify leaked data source connections using log files. Okay, let me go to the section. So now, what is a data source? So data source is a link established between the application and the database to perform tasks like a retrieving or updating information. Okay, so we have or I have posted multiple videos on the data source so far. Okay, so if you are not aware about the concept of data source so data source or a connection pool is a pool of ready to use connections that means the connection that has already been established with the database and already tested and healthy okay so this is used to increase the performance of the application to avoid any kind of overhead that is required for the application to create the database connection at the runtime okay if whenever the application need the connection from the database and every time the connection application is going to a database dynamically to create the connection it can create a certain kind of a performance issues to so avoid that and for multiple other reasons okay we use the data source okay in data source you have, will have a connection pool which will contain the multiple ready to use connections okay based on the capacity that you defined okay so what is a leak connection so a leak data source connection happens when the application fail to properly release or close this connection after it's doing using it okay imagine if you forgot to run off a tap after using water similarly the connection remain open consume server resources unnecessarily so what happen is that whenever a, uh, a application need a connection from the connection pool okay so that need to be closed explicitly so when the data uh, the connection uh, uh, requirement is done okay so that time that connection need to be returned to the pool okay and to return that connection to the pool it has to be closed explicitly in the code for that there is a connection dot close statement is required when we design the application okay so many time it has happened that that developer uh, do not define or forget to 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 write the close statement when they call the connection pool from the data source in that case what happen is that whatever the connection that has been taken by the application it will not get closed and if it does not get closed that means it will not return to the pool okay and that uh, connection which is not returned to the pool called as a leak connection okay because that is still is still established and but it not in use but it is not available for the other request as well that will remain open okay and it will if it will remain open that will it will consume the resources also it will unnecessary unnecessary uh, um, uh, keep the bandwidth of your connection pool capacity for example if you have a maximum capacity of connection pool is 100 now out of 100 if you have 20 or 30 connection pools or, or the connections are getting leaked that means there is a certain time of uh, will come up and during the high load when your application or your data source will throw a resource pool exception okay because of the leak connection pool because your application will not able to get the connection from the connection pool during the high load okay so to avoid that situation if the code uh, or or uh, if code is not designed in a proper way or maybe you will have a certain different more problems where you have a connection leaks to avoid that we have a certain parameters that when we can define in the data source when we configure okay so these are the different separate problems that can be caused by the uh, leak connection pool like you will get a performance issues you will got, get the resource exhaustion right because your uh, connection pool capacity if the connection pool capacity maximum connection pool capacity is reached then you will get the resource exhaustion exception security risk is also there right because if you have, if you have an open connection pool leak connection uh, is there okay which is not returned to your uh, pool that means still, that connection is still keep open and that open connection can be compromised so there would be a security risk as well with the leak connection okay 
so to avoid that one what i said is that two developers need to define the properly statement in in their code when they call the connection from the database using the data source okay now if suppose that you have a certain kind of a problems where you may not able to understand the code you are not able to identify if the connections are not getting close or not properly in the code you have a large enterprise application lot of dependencies are there so okay so you have a parameter that is called inactive connection timeout okay so this inactive connection timeout parameter that you can set from the weblogic console okay and what is the use of inaction connection timeout data source okay so it refer to the duration of time a connection can remain inactive not used before it is automatically closed and returned to the connection pool that means if you have any connection that is leaked that means that is not explicitly returned back to the pool so your data source will wait for the time that has been defined in the inactive connection timeout after that it will forcefully return that connection to the pool okay for example if you have defined the inactive connection timeout as 60 seconds okay and your transaction get completed in 20 second but your connection get leaked okay that means it is not returned to the pool so it will keep remain open for the 60 seconds the value that you have defined for the inactive connection timeout after that that connection pool will be forcefully returned to your connection pool right so this is a parameter that is used to handle the uh, problem that you will get due to, the, due to the leak connections right so how to configure this value for that you have to go to your uh, data source okay and then connection pool tab and then in advanced option let me show you that as well so uh, this is the weblogic console let me go to data sources click on your data source then connection pool so here you will have an advanced tab click on the advanced tab okay and here you will have a parameter that is called inactive connection timeout okay so zero value means it is disabled okay if it is zero that means it will not forcefully return connection to the connection pool in case you have a leaked connection counts okay so this is the way how you can uh, set this inactive connection timeout but there are other consequences as well when we configure the inactive connection timeout okay so what are the consequences let me show you so there are two cases when you really have a leak connection uh, leak connections okay that means uh, you really have a problem you are dealing with a problem where you have a lot of leak connections the connections are not getting getting released you are continuously getting performance problem resource ex exhaustion problem okay in that case this parameter is very helpful you can define it according to your application requirement okay either 30 second 45 second or 60 seconds or maybe more than that one okay and that will help you to deal with the leak connection count but apart from that you have a case 2 as well so what exactly is case 2 is it is also possible for a connection to become inactive if a long running session is running in the database especially if the connection is not actively sending or receiving data during the time so that means whenever a connection established with the database then during the execution there are a lot of data get exchanged between the application and database right there could be a possibility that you will have a long running sessions so maybe you have a long batch jobs some reporting jobs the lot of different kind of application where it is expected that the, the queries that is getting fired from the application will going to take the time in the database maybe it is uh, more than 60 seconds 120 seconds it could be uh, 20 minutes or 40 minutes or 30 minutes as well based on the different kind of applications that you are running okay so what will happen in that case if we have a such long running sessions that also give a sense to the connection that that connection is not in use that means that is not an active connection because there is no data exchange is happening between your uh, database and your application server till that query get executed okay so in that case your uh, in application server also get a feel that this connection is not active or maybe this connection is inactive however in the background that there is a query which is running since very long and that is expected okay based on the application so what happened in that case if you configure your inactive connection timeout for example to 60 seconds okay and you have expected that a query is going to be run for 120 seconds right so what will happen that if your query is running in the background in the database right but what will happen if you have defined the inactive connection as timeout as 60 so after 60 seconds that connection which was waiting to get the response from the database 
will get forcefully returned to your connection pool. That means that connection will get distracted. Okay, and this is not the expected scenario. Right. And that's why I was saying that when we deal with the inactive connection timeout parameter, we have to specifically know about our application requirement, the expected response time of our database. Whatever the queries that uh, that uh, your application server is firing from the code, what is the expected execution time for that particular query to get the response from the database? And based on that, we define the inactive connection timeouts. Okay, so these are the two use cases. Okay, that need to be considered when we uh, define the inactive connection timeout. Okay, now. Uh, how to identify the leak connection if you really have the leak connection or not and importantly which application code or which uh, particular application is causing the leak connection okay how to identify that one so for that one uh, it depends on the kind of a web logic version you are using okay so if you are using any version which is prior to 12.13 or maybe 12.13 okay then in the log file when the connection is forcefully returned to your uh, connection pool there is a message with the BEA code 001153 will be logged in the server. Okay, here you can see that this is a 001153 message is logged in the server. Okay, what exactly it is saying that forcefully releasing inactive harvested connection to weblogic this, 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 this in the this connection pool. This is the name of your data source. Right. So that means if I have given example of the 60 second. If you have given the 60 second for this value and your connection uh, is taking more than that time, okay, and the connection then that is, will be forcefully released. And after that, this exception will be logged in the log file if you are using the WebLogic version 12.13 or prior, okay. And to get the suspicious application which is exactly, exactly causing this holding this particular connection, you have to go to the section where you will have the string called get connection okay and just after that get connection string you will see the application code which is suspicious okay because this this is the uh, application code which was holding the connection which was forcefully returned to the connection pool so this is the way how you can uh, identify the particular application or code which was causing the application uh, data source connection to be leaked okay now if you are on the later version of 12.13 is for 12.2 and x versions okay if you are in the 12.2.x versions like 12.2.1.2, 12.2.1.3, 12.2.1.4 okay so now this message code is get changed it will be now BEA001592 okay so earlier it was uh, 1153 so now it is 1592 okay so what will happen in case any uh, connection is get forcibly returned to the connection pool based on the inactive connection timeout settings then you will get the similar exception that we have seen in the previous example as well the forcefully return to the connection uh, to your data source or connection pool okay but after that you will not see any stack trace which we were able to see prior to 12 to 12 1 3 right this was a stack trace that we are seeing after just after see the this exception forcefully return but if you are on the 12 2.x version then it will only log this message and nothing else no stack trace will be logged okay so now how you can identify the application which caused the connection leak for that one we have now two uh, connection uh, pool parameters that need to be enabled okay that is for some enhancement okay for extra troubleshooting purpose there are a lot of purpose of these two parameters and along with that we have a lot more parameters okay so specifically if you would like to troubleshoot which part of the code is causing this connection to be hold which was forcefully returned for that one you have to enable the two parameters okay for that you have to go to admin console services data sources and click on data source name and click on diagnostic tab let me show you this as well so this is the um, data source right and this is the connection pool and this is the diagnostic tab okay so here we have uh, the parameter connect profile connection leak okay and then profile connection leak timeout seconds so these are the two parameters that you need to be enabled to identify which application code is exactly causing the problem of this connection leak okay so these are the two parameters and this is the location that i have shown to you and what exactly these parameters are profile connection leak enabled disabled so when enabled the weblogic track tracks the users of jdbc connections to detect potential leaks 
if a connection is not properly closed after use it considered a potential leak diagnostic information about potential leak is logged to help the developer identify troubleshoot issues so that means if this property is enabled it will always keep monitor the jdbc connection pool status okay connection status and if any connection is not returned based on the inactive connection timeout values okay it will log the diagnostic information with respect to that particular connection in the log file okay and apart from that you will have a profile connection leak timeout seconds so what exactly is this parameter this option determine how long weblogic will monitor a connection after it has been identified as a potential leak so that means if any connection that has been identified as weblogic by weblogic as a okay this is the problematic connection after that it is going to monitor that particular connection for a certain duration of time to get the uh, stack trace of that particular connection so if a connection remain open longer than this timeout period after being flagged as a potential leak additional diagnostic information is logged okay so for example that if we have defined this value as 300 second okay and after 300 seconds that connection has still been declared as a leak connection that your data source will going to log extra diagnostic information with respect to that connection okay so this will help you this will help you to to uh, troubleshoot the problem thoroughly okay and then once these connection parameters are enabled you can go to the log files and then look for the stack trace okay and which is exactly the same as in the previous example and apart from that let me uh, explain you one more uh, thing that when you uh, enable these parameters then you have to look for the data source log files okay so this is the default data source log file and path this is the logs and then data source dot log so this logs is the inside your server root folder right which is the inside your domain and then you will have a servers folder inside servers you will have a folder for each and every managed server and admin server inside that you will have a folder with name logs and inside logs it will create a data source dot log file okay this is the default configuration of your data source in your domain okay but you can change this as well okay so how you can change you can uh, go to your servers click on your server okay and then click on logging tab and click on your data source tab so this is the default path right so here you can change the location and name of the file if you would like to change and then you can change the rotation and then other some parameters or with respect to this particular log file so this is how you can configure the data sales log file as well right so once it is configured you can go to the log file and look for the same thing that we have seen in the previous session look for the get connection okay so just after the get connection you will see the suspicious application which exactly caused the data source connection to be leaked okay so this is how we we deal with the leak connections in active connection timeout in the web logic what is the difference when we uh, go for the troubleshooting in for the leak connections prior to 12.13 versions and then after the 12.2x version right so thanks for watching this video stay tuned for next video